Welcome to the new year because apparently it is January 1st, which means it's not. It's actually a few days earlier. But that means I have to do a rush job on a massively complicated pedal, which means realistically, sorry, Ibanez, screw you, Dan. I can't take it into tons of amps because it actually doesn't make a lot of sense. You can see there is one light, two light, no more lights because we'll get to it. So. Usually on January 1st, we have loads of Albinus news, meaning the Satriani now has a different color. Wow. Oh, no, wait, wait. The, 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 the guys from Polyphia, Henson and LePage, they have new signature and they have new fucking colors. Okay, there's new stuff. And apparently they said, should a nam should come. But they sent me something. I'm like, okay, where are the guitars? Where are the guitars? And there's a box. I'm like, that's a tiny guitar. And then there's a pedal in there. And what do you expect when Ibanez does something new? Limited edition Tube Screamer in a different color that nobody fucking needs. Nobody needs a Tube Screamer because you usually, you usually have one. Unless you don't have one, then buy one. The Ibanez ones are good. They're the actual Tube Screamers. But um, no, they really surprised me with something... I completely didn't see coming. It is completely out of the box for Ibanez. It's a complex pedal. 
they usually have the little ones with the phaser flames. I don't, I don't know where they came from, but it says Ibanez on it, so I'm gonna guess it's Ibanez. That's also where I'm sending the bill for this video, so I hope it's Ibanez. Here it is. Yeah, this is not a tube screamer. So we got a. Uh, let's, let's go through it. This is gonna take seven hours, and then we'll play it. The important thing, and that's why we don't have a lot of amps on, is it says a preamp. A le preamp. No, it says preamp. What about preamp is in Japanese? I don't know. I would try to do a fake Japanese accent, but that's probably highly offensive, so we're not doing it. Doing fake French accents, that's allowed. So, it's the preamp, it's the pentatone. Penta for 14. Because look, a one, two, three, four, five, we're gonna turn that off. And the lights go off. Love the visual feedback with lights on this thing. Because you have a light here, Light there, light there. This is not lightable, but this is. Preamp. And that means, can you run it in front of an amp? Yes, you can, but be careful. If you're running it more low gain and you're careful with the low end, you can. But see where my level is? You gotta be careful because it has this Mesa Boogie-esque I mean, Miss Boogie is known for the uh, five band EQ. So it, it is reminiscent of that. And it has this Mesa Boogie-esque behavior of just pushing way too much in the low end and blowing too much into your amp. And then the amp goes, oh, no, I don't want to. Oh, I don't want to. Which is when I decided to run it as a preamp. And even then, it's doing that a little bit. So be careful with the low end, be careful with the level. This thing has way too much of it. And then your amp says, no, thank you. And that means we're running it into the power amp directly. In this case of the Soldano that I have over there. So yeah, okay, we're running it into the power amp of a very expensive amp. You can run it into other power amps. I ran it into the power amp of the Red 7. But several times the effects loop just said no thank you and actually turned itself off. So maybe it was a little bit too much level. I don't know why. So that's when I switched to the Soldano. So we're going in here and out here. 110 milliamps should be fed right there. And this is way cool. It's a tip ring sleeve uh, switch input, which allows you to switch other things. What was that? The pre and the EQ can be foot switchable or actually uh, programmable if you wanted that, if you're working with the looper switcher pedal, if you have switch, programmable switch presets. And we're going in and you can have a pre-boost. So before anything goes into the drive, you can boost it here. See that as an additional gain stage, okay? That is foot switchable with the tip ring sleeve if you wanted to. Really nice, big ass switch on it. I mean, not big ass. I mean, little switch, but I mean, it's this is solid. This is a very solid pedal. When you hear the price, that's fucking ridiculous. It really is. Then we go into gain. This is where you make it screechy and how much it screeches. Then you have bass and treble, which are very subtle, as you will see. I don't even know why they're there, to be honest. I mean, of course, if you don't ha have the EQ on, fine. Let's call them passive EQ, maybe. I don't know if that's what it is. And then level. You can add a bright switch like on a preamp, so that makes sense. There is a post boost. So if you wanna kick it harder into your power amp, after everything has been generated, you can, you know, kick it in more, which seems to behave differently from the level. And then that's very cool because it's primarily probably a high gainy pedal. There is a gate that shows you that it's on and how it's behaving and stuff like this. That's a lot! But we have a five-band graphic EQ. And usually that means you've got fixed, let's, let's call it 80, 250, 7, I'm going to read that 80, 2.4, and 7K. That would be the norm. And they have little notches in the middle, so you actually know when you're in the middle. That's how you do it. So that's... That would be the normal way to do it, giving you guitar-friendly frequencies. Now, I've just thought, 
screw that. We're making it semi-parametric and we're giving each of the five EQ sliders a freaking very solid, this is really nice. Is this metal? No. We're <laughs> giving them, I'm excited about this thing. Um, and we got, I'm gonna go over here and read this. 30 to 100, 30 is completely pointless because that's the low B on a five string is I think 28 hertz. So for guitar, even anything under 100 for guitar, get rid of it. So maybe do this and do this. We'll try that. Um, then we got 85 to 360, 200 to 1.3, 620 to 4, 1.5 to 14.5. Now, you might not know at all what I'm talking about. If you're the kind of person that don't know, don't know, it's very late, that doesn't know what I'm talking about, maybe turn the video off by a tube screamer. I'm, I'm, I'm fully serious. This is not for the faint of heart. This is not for the beginner because you will fiddle with this, set something up, and there are more shitty sounds in this than there are good ones. Very simply, because there are certain things that work and certain things that don't. And when you fiddle around with certain frequencies and boost them just a tad too much, shit happens. This is for someone that knows where they want to go and then dial it in. If you are trying to get a good sound by fiddling around accidentally, you're going to fiddle around for a long time. Maybe start with that thing off. You might think this is for all the high gain stuff. I got ridiculously cool low gain leads out of it, which we will do when we're using it in front of an amp, which we will also do. I'm sorry, Leslie, how long is the video gonna be? I'll, I'll, I'll try my best. So, too long like all of them. I know, too long like all of them. How about you, how about you shut your trap? She worked all day and, and came home and we have to do this video. So, you know, give the woman some props. Send her some flowers. She doesn't like flowers. Send no, her, I don't like flowers. Yeah, send her dog food. But I'm not gonna give you an address, you have to find that. She's mine. Now I could go metal guitar, metal guitar, and I was thinking what guitar do I use? But if I have like some kind of metal guitar, then it's too pigeonholed. So I'm not doing that. You already heard what it can do in terms of metal in the beginning, I think. Um, when this buzzes, this is because it is a P90. There's a bunch of lights, there's a computer and 10 cameras on. This is an environment where the P90 will do that. So the setup right now, this is going into the power amp of the Soldano, into the effects return, into the Ox with the 412 cream back, not V30, loaded cap. So can you get brutal sounds? More brutal? Yes, I might even switch for you guys. We'll see. And this is not the most brutal guitar, okay? But that's what we're going to do. So right now you're just hearing the power amp. Get the gain all the way down here. And we kick this in again, it's a preamp. It is not really a clean preamp. You want the... See, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Now it's gone. We want the, uh, the bride. Do you hear that mid honk? That is beautiful. That is so nice of that thing. I, I assumed it's a high gain thing and then I started noodling with it and I was like, this is good for the blue sky. The blue sky is never gonna buy this, but it's good. So let's try that. I mean, if there's buzz, why not just use the gate?
I mean, it's already it's already fantastic. I'm sorry. Gonna give it some trouble. There, trouble's on the left. Weird, weirdly. Now, now, how does that make sense? Bass to treble, but then bass and treble. Use interface, Ivan's people. Come on. So I'm gonna kick in the the gates here. Let's do in do the uh, pre boost. Get some more gain. is not yet used. So let's shape, well, let's turn the post boost off. Let's shape that sound. The way I would do it, the way that you do it when you EQ with a semi-parametric EQs, you boost it all the way, so you really hear what you're doing, sweep the frequency, and then take it back to where you want it. get those mids out, maybe a little bit less bassy. Build yourself your own Joop Screamer! When it comes to leads, you can literally build anything. You want full on Brian May? It actually, now it sounds a little bit um, vintage oldified, like old radio. because Ibanez. So that is possible. Uh, of course, we're talking, turn that off. 
You want some kind of rhythmic sounds. You notice that's way too much in the hefty low end. And that's, do you, do you hear that? Uh, that flabbing out. That is what I'm talking about. You have to be careful with that. I don't know where to look. I know what you want to hear. Let's go for some heavy sound. Here yeah, that's very dense and, and the amp is kind of like going, ooh, ooh, careful. It is that typical Mesa kind of feel, which is why everyone uses a boost uh, tube screamer with the gain down, which literally just takes the low end out. No, no, it's a boost. Shut up. It's not. What do I do? Less bass here. Let's see what that does. It's more subtle. You can do a little bit of that. No treble. It's way too muffly. But, first of all, not so much gain. And this is, of course, what you want. You want the EQ. And we're going to give the smiley. Gonna try to get the really low end, the real low, 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 low end out. So now it's way more responsive. And now we're gonna get some of that back in with the second uh, slidey thing. That's the mean high mid. And the treble right here. It's not really the smiley, right? But I mean, that's. That's what works in a mix. You want it bright. You want it to stand out. You want it to be responsive. You don't want it to go oof, 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 like a dog. I don't know if the BHI is in tune, but this is the BHI.
the post boost is just going to get, make your amp go no 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 no. Depends on of course your amp and its headroom, but I mean this is a hundred watt Soldano, so can work, but it doesn't have to. Okay. <laughs> It's, it's it's fuzzing out. It sounds like a fuzz now, and nobody needs that. <laughs> That's without the EQ. Ha! V30. I never use it, it's too brutal for me, but I mean... Apparently, tremolo picking is what one does, according to Scott. So that's what you do when you do the heavy stuff. I don't get it, but I mean... That's just horrible. But I mean... A little bit too much in the low end there. Gotta be very subtle. I want more mids. It's it's fun. A little bit much on the beat. <laughs> this is this Mario like, you know, like the super guy. could really do something with that if you made that a playing stuff. I will show you now what that sounds like into the front of an amp. <laughs> so this is now the Tone King Sky King on clean.
working. Very dangerous to get those metal zone sounds. Very dangerous. Back to the cream back. It's a little bit, you know, fuzzly verwaschen, as we say in German. Washed out. I don't think anyone with a vintage style strat would play this into the front of an amp, except the guy who's got to test it.
and it's quiet. And that's about it. Make it big. So they get sidetracked there with uh, the noodling, but I mean, they have to have to work with it and dial it in. Is it only a massive monster metal preamp pedal? No. With the gate, pre, post, level, all in the in the EQ. Yes, it is kind of geared towards the heavier styles. Putting it into a power amp, I could probably take this and maybe into the power stage and into a cab, go completely non-tube. I don't know if I wanted that. But you could see the cab selection is instrumental, get it, it's an instrument, um, in, in getting the right frequency response. Uh, it's always the cab that does the most. So if you want the super mega heavy, go for what I did with the V30. I do like the more creamy, slightly warmer sounds of the cream back. But this, with that setting and the cream back in front of an amp, forget that it says preamp. You can totally use this as a drive. Just be careful with the low end. Just be careful how you're pushing the amp. Just be careful with the level and all that. But then if you're taking it into a power amp with the right cap, with the right guitar, and you know how to play, which I don't, then uh, yeah, this thing is the absolute mega metal monster beast. Let's go into the negatives. The manual sucks. It doesn't. It tells you everything you need to know. But boy, is it matter of fact. This is a pedal. This is what the controls do. Done. No recommended settings, which is literally they could have a 50 recommended settings because this thing can do a million things. No, uh, put it in front of an amp, put it in the effects loop of, of an amp. What if you use it with an IR loader directly? Uh, here are the ideas. No, welcome. This is the Ibanez R&D team. We had an idea. We chased this tone for five years and tried to develop this pedal, blah, blah, blah. You know, some history, some some mojo, some story, some passion about this. Someone put a lot of passion into this. And it's not reflected in the very matter of fact, refrigerator style manual. Not the manual is a refrigerator, but it reads like the manual for a refrigerator. Ibanez, look at Beatronics, Walrus Audio, and all these companies that give you a little story to read. I mean, I never read them, but it still is nice to give it some life, some history, okay? Um, next is, this is not the pedal for the beginner. You can very easily get ridiculously bad sounds out of it, okay? All you gotta do is, I mean, doing this. <laughs> That's where the, I always forget it, Metal Zone lies. The Metal Zone has also very tweakable high-end, low-end, mids, tweakable mids, but with tiny, tiny knobs that if you push them just a tad too much, you are in that unusable territory. The Metal Zone can sound amazing if you know what you're doing. Same thing here. Um, it's They're giving you five fully parametric frequencies boost or cut and the frequency, but you have to know where you're going in order to get the usable sounds. You can very easily get into complete mud territory, pushing your amp too much and making it fuzz out or blow out. Um, then using the pre-boost, the post-boost. It's all a bit much for the novice. If you're an engineer, you're a guitar player that has been around the block and you know how to use something like this, hell yeah, can you get a lot of value. Let's talk about value because the value is freaking ridiculous. I mean, I just reviewed the Soldano pedal, which is a good pedal. I mean, reviewed, I don't know. Watch my videos, they're funny. Um, it gives you that Soldano sound. It can also be very blown up in the low end because the Soldano has that tendency but no offense to Soldano, I love the guys. You guys know I love you. 
But that slow downward pedal is relatively simple. It's got a deep switch up on the side. It's got a presence. You can use it as a preamp into a power amp. It works fine like this or in front of an amp. But it's also a little bit finicky in terms of what amps you're push it, putting it into. But for example, that Soldano pedal clocks in at 289. So the Soldano name is on it. You're paying for that as well. That's clear. But that's a simpler pedal at 289. I can list a bunch of pedals that are more expensive than this because this is 250 euro. Yes, that is utterly ridiculous. The quality, the build quality, the fact that you can put a tip ring sleeve dual foot switch in it and switch this remotely and this remotely. You can already switch this. These are not switchable, but who cares? Utterly insane. Um, this is a complex pedal. It's well built. It has a lot of options for the lead player. And yes, for the bluesy guy, I mean, it can't go super low gain or sh super, super low gain as Sean Connery would have said. Um, but I'm sorry, it's late. And I have, I don't know where the energy comes from. But 250 euro is an absolute steal. If Mesa, and Mesa has similar pedals, but not of this complexity. I have tested them years ago and they're good. But... They're clocking in at way more than that. Ibanez, I didn't see this coming. Would have never thought you'd do something like this. Would have never never thought you'd do it at two. The freaking hand wire tube screamer is three ninety nine. Don't buy that. That's dumb. It's a fucking tube screamer. Sounds like the tube screamer mini that you can get for seventy nine bucks. Get that one. It's literally like the others. But what do I know? Nothing. This, especially if you're into heavier stuff, is amazing. If you're into leads and you really want to dial them in exactly like you want them, that's the thing. It's a great pedal. I told you what I think about the negatives, but it's, they're really, I mean, the negatives are it's too complicated for the beginner and the manual could have a little bit more heart to it. Realistically, other than that, and yeah, and I mean, careful with the level, careful with the low end. It does tend, especially with more modern guitars, to blow a little bit in the low end and you just don't you don't have the response anymore to get the response you have to know how to dial it in i cannot stress that enough a little bit less bass a little bit less bass here depending on your cab depending on your, on your guitar depending on your amp you have to know what do it okay it should come with a warning it takes experience that's it I'm out, 250, links below. I don't know when it's available. It's announced now, but I mean, when's it available? I don't know. Maybe when you're watching this video in a year from when I filmed it. I have no idea. Uh, please follow me on all the Instas, Facebooks. I'm not on TikTok, but that might happen. Who knows? Please go everywhere. Follow me. Links are at the end in the end card where there's animals from the shelter where Leslie works. Uh, it, it, thanks for everything. You guys have been awesome. And we're going on the couch now. Bye-bye. Um, Oh, what, what do we say at the end? Animals at the end. <laughs>